According to the most recent U.S. Census data, 12.9%, or 40 million people living in this country were born as non-U.S. citizens in other nations. The top 10 countries that contribute the most immigrants to the U.S. are all non-English speaking countries. Regina Suit, Dean of Adult Education at Pima Community College, explains the difficulties these immigrants face as they come to Tucson. Their biggest hurdle is the uh, language and cultural differences um, coming here. So we offer classes in three learning centers as well as some community sites. Um, our classes are free and um, I think really you know we're kind of that first step you know into you know school into you know the culture here in Tucson in America so um, you know it's exciting to kind of see that journey from people when they really literally step off an airplane sometimes and are in classes the next week. Entikov is an Iraqi refugee and program coordinator at the Tucson International Alliance of Refugee Communities, an organization dedicated to helping people adjust to a new life in Tucson. She knows how to help these immigrants and refugees because she understands what it is like to move to a new country herself. Everything is hard. I, I still, you know, finding it difficult to, to adjust in the, in the in your life in here. Uh, but the major thing is leaving your family behind. She knew English when she arrived here, but one of the organization's main focuses is teaching English to those that arrive here without that skill. It's very hard, you know, because I'm seeing that with my people, yes, the Iraqis and even Somalis from different countries. If you don't have English, it's, it's a big deal on the program. They don't know the, how to buy things, how to find streets, how, it's hard, you know. It's, you know, it's a different language. And even for myself. I'm still finding difficulty in you know, pronouncing some words or, you know, reading them. So, it is a new language. Julio Pajaro, an immigrant from Mexico that speaks little English, agreed that the language is the biggest challenge in relocation. Finding work has been a particular frustration, and he has had few bosses that speak fluent Spanish. He has had the most success working in construction, plumbing, and landscaping. And though he has managed to live and be okay, he said learning English is essential to really do well here. It is possible, but I think to thrive, you know, culturally, economically in the United States, just probably like in any country, you really do need to learn um, the language and the culture. So our parts, our job is helping them to go out because a lot of them, they just keep themselves inside their apartment. They never try to go outside. They never try to go outside and discover what's going on around. And we want them to, you know, to be in touch with the new generation. Julio said he didn't know where to go to learn English when he arrived and wondered if there is more that can be done to help immigrants. Regina has gone to local authorities and to Washington, D.C. to advocate for adult education. She wants to ensure these resources are available for years to come. We always have um, waiting lists. We're government funded. Our classes are free, so there's always certainly more that can be done to offer more services because, I mean, with refugees, you know, and, and immigrants who are here through legal channels, it's not like they're going anywhere, and so it only serves us all to help. I mean, they're our neighbors. Um, so um, I think there's definitely an opportunity for, for more services.